Glory to God. We welcome you this morning. Are you ready to praise God with us? Come on and stand with us this morning. For those who are joining us online, we welcome you. Thank you for tuning in this morning. Uh, just as we worship here, you worship at home. There's no distance in time, uh, in or distance or time in the spirit. Amen. Hallelujah. I know that there's a, a little. Uh, someone who's missing this morning. Mom is not here on the front row. She's not here this morning. I think this is the first time she's missed church in all these years. She does not have COVID. She just needs to rest. And so we're a little lost without her this morning. It's not easy without her. You know, she's a big, big part of what we do here. And so uh, just keep her in your prayers this morning. Send her your love this morning and pray for her this morning. Amen. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you for this time together. We just appreciate you. We love you. We trust you. We love everything about you. We love the fellowship that we have with you, the communion that we have on a daily basis with you. And as we come together to worship corporately, it's just an overflow of what we do on a daily basis of our time with you. We just thank you for your presence. We thank you for your power. We thank you for your purpose, Father God. In this house, we give all glory and honor to you. Hallelujah. You ready to shake things up this morning? Do you believe that the power of God is working in you this morning? Hallelujah. I just love the scripture, the verses that talk about the valley of the dry bones. <laughs> And they all come together, amen, and they come alive, hallelujah. Well, we've been made alive in Christ Jesus, amen. You and I have his life flowing in us, his power and ability flowing in us. So let's just sing about that this morning, amen, hallelujah. Dry bones rattling 
This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Pentecostal fire, stirring something new. You're not gonna run out of miracles anytime. Aren't you glad? Resurrection power runs in my veins too. I believe there's another miracle here in this room. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. This is the praise make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We thank you that we serve a mighty God. There's nothing impossible for Him. Amen. Oh, we thank you, Lord. We give you praise. We give you glory this morning. Come on, declare it with us this morning. My God is able to save and deliver and heal and restore anything that he wants to. Just ask the man who was thrown on the bones of Elijah if there's anything that he can do. Just ask the stone that was rolled at the tomb in the garden what happens when God says to move. I know he's moving it now. I know he's moving it now. I know he's doing it now. Do it now. Do it now. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Ha! This is a praise, make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Oh, <laughs> We can hear it this morning. We can hear it by faith. The dry bones have to hear the word of the Lord. Amen. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, we praise your Father. I hear the sound. Oh. I hear the sound. Oh. I hear the sound. I hear the sound. Hear the sound. I hear, I hear the sound. I hear the sound. I hear the sound. Live, live. Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. Live, live. Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. Live, live. Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. Live, live. Dry bones hear the word of the Lord. Live. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. This is a place make a dead man walk again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave, I'm coming out. I'm gonna live, gonna live again. Open the grave. I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, come on, sing it! Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live one more time. Open the grave, I'm coming out, I'm gonna live, gonna live again. This is the sound of the dry bones rattling. Woo! Oh, hallelujah! Come on and thank him this morning. He's made you alive. Hallelujah. You live for him. Hallelujah.
Hallelujah. You live in Him. Hallelujah. Glory to King Jesus this morning. Glory to the King this morning. Thank you, Jesus. Glory, 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 glory. Hallelujah. Oh, thank you, Father. Come on and praise Him. Oh, hallelujah. We have the life of God in us. Hallelujah. We've got His life. Hallelujah. His nature. Hallelujah. Oh, we bless you, Father. We praise you. Aren't you so glad for the goodness of God in your life? You could say he's always been faithful. He's always good. Amen. But then you got to do something about it. You walk in his goodness and walk in his faithfulness. Amen. You got to receive it. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, we thank you, Father. So, so we look forward to the things that he has for us. We don't dwell in the past. You know, we can look back at the past and see the learning experiences that we've had and look at the things that we've come out of and thank God for his deliverance. But we look to the bright future he has for us. And when we're in Jesus, we do have a bright future. Our future is bright. Doesn't matter what man says, but it's what he says. And so when we look to him, we have a bright future. Amen. And we can dance every morning when the sun comes up. <laughs> we can dance when we go to bed. Hallelujah. Because we know that there's hope in our future. Yeah, we're going to heaven. We're going to heaven. Amen. We've received Jesus. But there's a hope for right down here on this earth. We don't have to live low here on this earth. He has a high place for us to live even in this life. Amen. So we embrace that this morning. We embrace it. Hallelujah. seen your goodness on the mountain I felt your love within the valley and your grace it still surrounds me God you've been good to me you've been good to me come on sing that again seen your goodness on the mountain have you seen it hallelujah i felt your love within the valley hallelujah and your grace it still surrounds me god you've been good to me tell him you've been good to me hallelujah my soul sings, my soul sings with all my heart. I love you, Lord. Come on, tell him this morning. Lord, we bless you in this house. We worship you, Jesus. I have breath within my body. Oh, thank you, Lord. I have life inside my bones. <laughs> and I cannot help but praise you. God, you to me you've been good to me oh, oh. my soul oh yes it does Lord my soul come on sing 
sing it again. <laughs> my soul sings. My soul it sings. My soul sings with all my heart. Come on, sing it to him. I love you, Lord. dreams to come and when seasons change I won't give up cause you never fail me no, no not once so I'm dancing on the rising sun to the hopeful future and the dreams to Seasons change, I won't give up, cause you never fail me, no not once, my soul, oh, I sing to you Lord, my soul, oh yes, my soul sings Jesus, my soul, I to me, yes, you've been good to me, but I'm 
dancing on the rising sun to my hopeful future and the dreams to come and when seasons change oh I won't give up cause you never fail me no no not once come on one more time and I'm dancing on the rising sun to my hopeful future and the dreams to come and when seasons change oh yes they will I won't give up the Lord no you never fail me Lord no not one come on one more time so I'm dancing hopeful future and the dreams to come and when seasons change no I won't give up cause you never fail me no not one hallelujah glory to you Jesus all the glory Oh, we thank you, we thank you, we thank you. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. Oh, we thank you, Jesus. He's our first love. He's our reward. Hallelujah. How awesome he is. How awesome he is. Such a privilege to know that we are in him. Amen. Hallelujah. Oh, Father, we just thank you. We bless you and we magnify you. We thank you that you are perfect in all of your ways. You are perfect in all of your ways. And we trust your plan. We trust your plan. Hallelujah. This morning, you can be seated at this time. And we're going to come back and do one more song. But we're going to go ahead and do our offering at this time. And then uh, we'll come back and we'll do one more song before we move into the message of the, this morning. Yes, if you're in need of an offering envelope, please go ahead and indicate it by the raise of your hand. We haven't done that for a while. Praise God. It feels good to get back to normal. Glory be to God. Just a little bit of instruction. Some of you heard this last Sunday. As you can see, the offering buckets are here. When we get through my part and we read our confession of faith, I would ask that you would please put your mask on, come up to the front and drop your offering in the offering bucket. And then once you get back to your seat, of course, you can remove your mask once again, praise God. Hallelujah. I had some thoughts written down in my notepad here, and they've been there for a little while. And one of the things that the Lord spoke to my heart is this, I think as believers sometimes we get to thinking that God's blessings, God's financial blessings upon our lives will only come if we are givers and we give faithfully and, you know, we never miss sin and, and all of that. And that's not really the truth of the matter. Luke 6, 30, uh, 33 says, give uh, uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and all these things shall be added unto you. I want to change one word in there and really make it personal to us. Seek first your relationship with God. Seek first the relationship, then all these things will be added unto you. At times I will take my wife clothes shopping just because most of the time she does her own she picks out what she wants and that's fine and good but there are times I'll say 
let's go shopping and I'll help you pick out some things, you know, different colors, maybe whatever, something that, you know, whatever. I don't do that for any other reason than I have a relationship with her. So she's receiving the benefits of a relationship. And so it is with our father. We don't receive benefits from God because we cross all the T's and dot all the I's just perfectly all of the time. It's because of our relationship with him. We don't receive from God because of our giving. We receive because of our relationship with him, praise God. And when you consider the relationship that you have and the reason you have it, praise God, it should put something on the inside of us. I want to give back to God in the way that I can in this earth. We can't bring anything to heaven. But for God so loved the world, hallelujah, that he gave, amen? amen. And I have said in the past so many times, we have the nature of our Father on the inside of us. I kind of saw it this way as I was worshiping God this morning. God always has us on his mind, but once you and I are saved, it's a little bit like a doctor in a hospital. Where if you're a doctor, you go a bunch of patients and you go to one and you get the, them settled in and you know they're okay now and they're pretty good. You're not going to stay with that one when you have you know, 25 other ones that are really bad. You're going to move from that one, you're going to go to the next one. So the Father's heart is for us, yes, but man, his mind and his heart is on the lost. And he's not coming down from heaven to take care of that. He already has. So he uses us, our relationship with him, to reach others, praise God. That should be the primary reason why we make a decision to give. You've heard me say this I don't know how many times. Because we love what God loves. We love people. Now, I know nowadays it seems like it's a little bit harder to love some of these people. Easy or hard, it doesn't matter. We love. If the only way that you can express your love to some of these hard people is by giving of your finances so the finances can be used to reach them, then do so, praise God. But my main, the heart of what I'm saying this morning is don't ever get in the mindset that God gives to me because I give to him. No. He gives to us because of our relationship with him. We do understand that he adopted us into his family. And any good parent who adopts will take care of the child that they adopt. Amen? Amen. Isn't that good news? I'm so glad that I don't have to get everything right all the time before he does his part. He's always good, praise God, even when we're not. So the thing that you hold in your hand this morning, I think if we get in the habit of seeing it as representing souls for the kingdom, the finances that come through this church, yes, they pay the electric bill, yes, they put heat in the building, AC coming sometime soon, praise God. We're going to trust God for that, amen? amen? But it's more than that. Think about how that even having AC would affect winning souls. I mean, Eric has said it in the past, and I agree with him 100%, but we, you're out there working in the world all day long, and it's 98 degrees outside, then you come to church, and it's 101 in the building. <sighs> it's not refreshing. So praise God when it's 95 degrees outside, and we invite people to come to church. We come in the church at 72. Boy, it's, they're going to want to come back. Amen? So the natural with the spiritual. Amen? Hallelujah. So remember that. Seek first your relationship. With God and all of these things, it will just come and follow in, praise God. Let's stand together this morning. What you hold in your hand is precious to God. When you give faithfully, what are you saying? It is you are trusting God, hallelujah, with your finances. Say this again from your hearts this morning. Believe this this morning as we read it together. Ready? Read. Because we are tithers, the windows of heaven are open. The blessing is being poured out. Because we are sowers, we are furnished in abundance for every good work. We receive jobs, better jobs, raises and bonuses, benefits, sales and commissions, settlements, estates and inheritances, interest and income, rebates and returns. We receive checks in the mail, 
supernatural wealth transfer, bills paid off, debts demolished, royalties received, and properties acquired. We are getting our buildings, lands, houses, vehicles, and equipment. God is bringing into our hands great big seed, and we are moving forward in faith in every area of our lives. We command our harvest to come. Harvest, come to us now. Harvesting angels, go get it and bring it to us right now in Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. Can we believe for these things? So if, if you're going to bring your offering up to the front this morning, as I mentioned, please put your mask on and come on forward. Praise God. We worship you this morning, Lord God, with our giving. We honor you, Father God, with our resources to the glory of God. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Praise you, Lord Jesus. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Come on and stand with us this morning. Let's just worship the Lord. we get some volume on Nasha's mic this morning? We serve a mighty God on this morning. And something that I'm thinking about, even as I'm standing here, is that as we worship God in this sanctuary on today, as big as God is, He's never too big or too busy to hear us. That right now that he would take notice of our worship in this sanctuary on today. You may think that your worship is insignificant to God. But the devil is a liar. He would try to shut you up because he knows that there's victory in your praise and in your worship. I don't know what you may have been going through this week. I don't know what you came in with. But I encourage you to lay it down. And you have one more opportunity to release it, focus on God, and just begin to worship. God has given us one more opportunity on this morning to worship. You know, we come to church to get ministered to. But this is the point in the service where we get to minister to our God. And so I encourage you to forget about everything else on this morning and think about the God that you serve. He's more than enough. And he deserves our praise and our worship. So as I'm sitting here and I'm singing this song today, my mind is in heaven. And I'm envisioning the throne of God. And I'm envisioning the elders and the angels flying around the throne of God. Saying, holy, holy, holy is the Lord God Almighty. Who was and is and is to come. And we're going to worship him forever. We have to start down here. Amen.
Praise God. Praise God. We welcome this morning. We want you to be open. If you, if you need any prayer uh, for healing or anything like that, raise your hand. Job or prayer or whatever you feel you need it, raise your hand. I'm going to send God's word to you. We're supposed to stay six feet from one another. <laughs> so, God's word goes right where you are. I can send his word a million miles away. It'll affect that person. Yes, it will. And so I'm going to send his word to you right now. Raise your hand. Father, in the name of Jesus, according to your word, that is forever settled in heaven, we choose now to settle your word today in our heart. Father, you see the hands of those people. And you know in their heart what they need for. We ask you now, Father, to answer their request. Cause their need, Lord, to be supplied. And thank you, Father, for your blessing upon their lives. Thank you that their request is answered and that they need us supply right now in the name of your son Jesus Christ, the Lord, Savior, and Master. And we thank you for it, Father. We bless you for it, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. We're going to pray for our leaders, our president, and all those that are in authority in leadership in this nation. Father, we bring our president, our vice president, and all those that are in authority in leadership in this nation today. Father, we pray for your wisdom, for your knowledge, for your strength and ability and courage, Lord, upon their lives to make the right decisions for this nation, Lord. Father, we thank you for your blessing upon this nation, United States of America. We thank you for it. We thank you for your protection. Thank you that no weapon formed against this nation shall prosper. And Father, we thank you for the nation of Israel. We thank you, Father, for the leaders there, Lord. We pray, Father, that your blessing be upon their lives, your protection be upon them, and that no weapon formed against them shall prosper. Father, we give you praise, we give you glory. We give you honor and thanksgiving. And thank you, Father. Thank you, Lord God. And I pray, Father, for my brothers and sisters here today. I pray for your blessing upon their lives. And Father, I pray for their loved ones at home, Father. I pray for your blessing upon them, Lord God. Your protection upon their lives, Father. Thank you for meeting all of their needs, Lord, according to your riches and glory by Christ Jesus. Father, we thank you. We praise you for it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Turn to your neighbor. No distance. And say, neighbor, I love you with the love of the Lord. You may be seated. Hallelujah. Praise God. Praise the Lord.
Glory to God. We have a good God. Amen. Amen. Praise the Lord. All right. Today, we're going to do things a little different today. I have a, a, a wonderful announcement to make at the end of this little session here. I'm going to, here goes the children, I'm going to wait for them to make their way. Praise the Lord. They're happy. <laughs> Praise God. Praise God. Today, I'm going to, instead of uh, teaching from the word, I'm going to take a little time and give my personal testimony to you because this will go in line with what I have to make the announcement at the end. First of all, I'm not a young man anymore. Now I don't feel old. But I'm not a young man anymore. I'm 78 years old. And in 10 days from today, I'll be 79. <laughs> and of course, I know that a 79-year-old man is not going to really understand the 30 or 20, 30, and so forth. We have to be open to the younger generation. Because they're the one, if the Lord tarry, they're the one that's going to continue on and on with his work. And so I realized that. And uh, I know that there has to be some changes. You know, I'm a ex-Marine. And uh, I'm not no more because they I, I'm a child of God. But if you ask most Marines that are not born again, they'll tell you, once a Marine, always a Marine. I'm not that no more. I have to fight it all the time because a Marine, once they tell you to do something, there's no question. Do as I say, not as I do. That's how the, the method is. And so it's kind of tough to relate to the young folks because it's totally different from the Marine Corps. I was born again some 40 years ago. And I thank my lovely wife that encouraged me and that the Lord used to get me born again. Now, I knew from eight years old 
that I was going to serve God somehow. I didn't know where, when, and how. But at eight years old, I knew that. And uh, thank God he put me with a, a, a woman that uh, knew him, loved him, and caused me to become born again. I was on my way to Newport, Rhode Island, fishing. And she said, I want you to stop at the church and find out when the CCD instruction is for our children. And we was living in Brockton. And uh, I said, okay. I went by St. Margaret Church in Belmont Street. I saw a man dressed, no collar. I thought he was just a janitor. And so I stopped over there. He says, uh, you want something to eat? I says, oh, no. You don't eat in Catholic Church. <laughs> First of all, I was afraid of those, those, those priests. And so he says, can I help you? What do you want? I told him what I wanted, that I came to find out about CCD instruction for our children. And he says, give me your address, and I'll send somebody over to, uh, tonight at 7 o'clock. Hmm. I just went out, do my business. 7 o'clock. I heard the door bell ring. I was exercising. And uh, I went and opened the door. Two ladies came with Bible in their hands. Hey, I heard about the Bible in Cape Verde, but I never saw one. And so this lady came and said, Father Joe Laughlin from St. Margaret sent us here. I said, okay. They said, you mind if we pray? I said, oh, no. I'm getting ready to pray Hail Mary full of grace because I thought that's what they would want to pray. They start talking to Jesus like I'm talking to you. I said, how can anybody talk to God like, like that? They never saw God in their life. So anyway, we sat down. At the table, my lovely wife on my right side, two ladies in front, they start reading the Bible. And I begin to understand a little bit. And then finally they says, now we want you to read it. I must have lost 10 pounds. I start sweating. They says, you read it out loud. Phew. I was nervous. Two ladies, never, never saw a Bible in my life. And then my wife over here and them in front of me. I got to read out loud in front of them. I, I was shaken. But anyway, the first, first verse I read was in John 1, 12. It says, he came unto his own, and his own received him not. But as many that received him gave him the power to become the sons of God. 
And I said, how can anybody become the son of God? They never saw God before. They said, we'll show you. And they took me to another verse, John 3, 16. We know what that says. It says, for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but shall have everlasting life. And then they told me to read further. And they took me to where Nicodemus came to Jesus at night and says, whereby we know that you are a teacher sent from God, for no man can do the miracle that thou doest except God be with him. And Jesus says, verily, verily, I say unto you, unless a man is born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. And Nicodemus said, how can a man be born again when he is old? Does he go back into his mother's womb and be born again? Jesus says, that which is born of the flesh is flesh, that which is born of the spirit is spirit. He says, marvel not that I say unto you, you must be born again. And they said, we'll show you how you can become born again. They took me to Romans chapter 10, where it says, the word is near you, and it is in your mouth and in your heart. And it says, the word of faith that which we speak, that if thou shalt confess the Lord Jesus Christ with your mouth and believe it in your heart that God hath raised him from the dead, that you shall be saved. I says, oh, wow. Now, I had came from Vietnam, a nervous wreck, mad at United States government because they didn't give us nothing. I didn't have a job. I didn't have no money. I had to go and unload banana boxes from the train to get some money. And in those days, it was not $12, $15 an hour. Hmm? It was a couple dollars an hour. And uh, the people treat us when we came like we were the enemy. And so I was a nervous wreck and uh, angry. But I'll tell you what, when they said, you want to be born again? I said, yeah. When I asked Jesus to come into my heart, Peace came into my heart right there and then. My wife and I became born again, and peace, love, and joy came into our lives. My life changed totally, totally. And from that moment on, I play the guitar. We was a Catholic charismatic that got us to be born again. And so naturally, we went to 
Westgate Chapel, Father Peter Taylor, and we started playing the guitar there. And then from there, we traveled all around different churches. Every night, we was going to different churches, leading praise and worship. One night, we sat with the nuns in uh, uh, by, uh, Bridgewater, by State College, Bridgewater, the convent there, all night long, playing and singing and praising God. One day, it was, a, it was summertime, there was in a park over there in, in Brockton, and it was our first time going. I saw these priests dancing around, these nuns dancing, and I went over there and danced. <laughs> On my way home, my, my, my wife says, that was a crazy thing to do. I said, well, they're doing it. And so I started praising the Lord. And uh, my first uh, pastor friend was Pastor Abraham. He's in Brockton. And uh, we started going to his church. And uh, I became the, his uh, praise and worship leader. And so from that time on, I kept on leading praise and worship and became his associate pastor. And from there, I went to uh, another church where we started. I became the associate pastor. And... From there, finally, Pastor Henry drove us to Oklahoma, going to Bible College. And stayed over there for 12 years. <laughs> and uh, my Attention was the minute we get, first of all, I thought I was only going for two years. Well, when I went over there, I went for two years. My other daughter wanted to go to Bible college. She went for two years. Then this one here, after that, she wants to go, so I had to wait. And then after that, my lovely wife wanted to go. So by the time we got through, it was 12 years. And we used to pray every night, on on every Thursday night, for one hour, and uh, the, the church that we was going to. And this was a mission, mission school for three months. So my, my, attention, my intention is to go to Cape Verde to start a church. So I'm over there, you know, making plans and everything else. And so this night I was praying, and all of a sudden I saw this highway. In those days, the speed limit was 75 maximum. I saw this highway. It had different speed limit from 25 all the way up to 75. And I heard inside of me, take limitation off me. So I said, what? But the Lord says, take limitation off me. I want you to come to Massachusetts and start a church. That means no Cape Hood. So we came. It got so, I mean, after I heard that, It, it, I wanted to come so, so bad that uh, 
If I had to ride bicycle from there to here, I would have, I would have done that. But anyway, we came down, and uh, we had to, because when we went to, to uh, Bible college, we left everything. We didn't take nothing with us. We didn't have any plan of a job, how we're going to work, and all how, but everything worked out perfectly. Uh, so when we came, we had to go to stay with our, uh, with, uh, our mother-in-law, my mother-in-law, my wife's uh, mother. And so we wanted to start a church right away. So we got a little place there and started church there. But that's not where God won us. He didn't say Providence, Rhode Island, or Pawtucket, Rhode Island. He says Massachusetts. So the next step was, OK, where do we go? We went to Brockton High School in the beginning. And from there, went to another uh, 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 I think it was, a, I forget the name, it was a, a hotel. And then from there, we came to Rainham. From Rainham, here we are. But that's some of the things that uh, we done. And I'm telling you, it's been to me a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful years. Enjoy every bit of it, knowing that I'm doing what God wants me to do. We uh, pioneered churches some 20 years ago. We've been doing the work of the Lord. And one of the great things, one of the things that I like was we had the opportunity. My wife and I have two daughters. And uh, we had the privilege of mentoring them so that they can do the work of the Lord. And of course, my lovely daughter, Maria, was one of them. I remember when they was little, we'd be walking in the park in Brockton. We'd be talking about God, talking about heaven, how beautiful heaven is going to be. And uh, almost everywhere we went, we talk about God. And uh, we taught them that's why today she's one of the, hey, here comes the children. <laughs> <laughs> Today, you can see that she's very, very, when it comes to praise and worship, she's very, very good at it. She's very good. She is. She is. She's very good. How did that took place? When they was little, we used to go downstairs 
I get the guitar. We sit there and worship the Lord all day long. Not just one hour, two hours, three hours. All day long, we'll be praising and worshiping and singing. And uh, I started taking them to nursing homes at early age. And they were the ones that be singing away. And I'll be playing the guitar. And uh, we get in the word with them every day before they go to school. Every day we get in the word. Thursday night was our family night day. That night, Whatever they want to do, we will do. They had to say so. And so we took that and started working with them that way. Today, we see the result of it. It pays. It pays to work with your children. It's a tremendous, tremendous. Blessing when we do that. She is very well qualified. And this is what I want to say. We are in the process of making changes in this body. Now, I'm not quitting. I'm not resigning. I'm not leaving. I'm here. We are here. But what we have decided with, with God's help is that we're going to turn the church over. Come, Maria. To this Young lady here, she is going to be your senior pastor. That's who she's going to be. Praise the Lord. That's right. That's right. She deserves it. She deserves it. That's right. That's right. She deserves it. And so, we will be here. My wife and I will be here. My wife is going to be teaching prayer and healing. I am from the beginning, the first week that I got born again, I was out there witnessing, telling people about the Lord Jesus. I even went in a bar room, knocking on doors all over the place. The first thing, I didn't even know how to, how to tell people about Jesus. My neighbor, next door neighbor, that was the first person I witnessed to. And she told me, she don't believe in God. I opened my Bible. I never knew that was there. I opened my, I just opened it. It came to Psalm, one, uh, Psalm 14. It says, stupid people say that, <laughs> that there is, I had a Jerusalem Bible that says that. It says, stupid people say that there is no God. 
And I told her that, and boy, her eyes got, <laughs> yeah. oh. She's in the church today. Oh. Oh. After that, when I see her, I went the other way around. But uh, anyway, witnessing to people, evangelism is, is my calling. I like that. I love evangelism. I don't go sleep unless I give somebody track or say something. And so I'm going to be doing that. And then I'm going to be visiting people in the hospital and also in prison. That's what I'm going to be doing. Uh, but in the meantime, I'll be helping her with whatever she wants us to do. I know we'll be able to help her with. So I encourage you folks, uh, thank you folks for receiving her. Amen. And we're going to make that. We're going to pass the, we're going to pass the baton on January the 10th. Amen. And uh, she will be your senior pastor. Praise God. Praise the Lord. Good. Good. And so with that, do you, 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 you want to say anything? Well, it's okay. She's, 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 I mean, I'm telling you, I rely on her so much, boy, because she's been my helper. Praise God. Amen. All yours. Thank you. Bless the Lord. You know, I know it's tough because mom's not here this morning and she wanted to be here. I know she wanted to be here. Um, but uh, this is just a blessing. We knew that this day was coming, didn't know how um, it was going to play out or how soon it was going to take place. Um, I know that um, since how he said, I've been groomed for this, but the devil will always tell you you're not ready. And so uh, when they said that it's time, um, I was like, mm. <laughs> is it though? Is it time? <laughs> you sure? 80 is not old. Um, and so, um, but because the devil will always tell you, you're not ready. And so um, he, my eyes were opened. We, um, had, we sought counsel. Um, part of the reason that Pastor Sam and Sherilyn were here with us a couple weeks ago was that they spent Saturday um, with the pastors and then, uh, you know, asked me if I would also uh, be there because they, after looking at everything, they felt that I was qualified to do it. And so uh, since that time, I've embraced it. <laughs> And God has just been speaking about things that we're going to do as a body. One thing that I would ask you to be in agreement with me on and to just keep speaking with me is that we are going to grow and that we are going to grow fast. Can you say that with me? Say, we are going to grow and we are going to grow fast. Um, we have a lot of stuff that we need to do in this community. The community does not care what we do in these four walls, but we need to reach the community around us. And uh, so there are going to be changes, obviously, that we're going to make with our services. You've already noticed we've started to shorten the services on Sunday. Two-hour services are a thing of the 90s. And so in early 2000s. And so we're going to come in a little uh, and change some things. Uh, we've already shortened that a bit. Uh, and we'll continue to do so. Take out all of the things that are not pertinent. You know, things that don't apply to everybody. You know, men don't need to hear about the women's thing. Men, women don't need to. So we'll do what we need to do and be purposeful in our time together. So we get everything that God has for us. And uh, then we can also be a blessing to our community. And so uh, we're excited about it. Mr. Eric is my support. And um, this puts him in a position where, um, you know, there's, uh, we all have to step up, right? And so uh, he has been my support since day one, and he will continue to do so. You'll see him front and center. 
anybody that's on the leadership team and that's, uh, uh, we have to start, it's like you're starting over. We're not calling it a reset. We're not calling it a start over. We're calling it a relaunch. We're going to be relaunching, okay? And so I don't like reinventing. I don't like those words, but we're just going to relaunch. And uh, it's going to be uh, what God wants us to do. Uh, the church is not changing its name. Our vision is still the same because that vision is in our heart. That's, uh, that's our founding pastor. He will now be, him and my mom will now be our founding pastors. That will be their position. Uh, they will be the founding pastors of the church, and they will be honored in every move that they make. My whole uh, reason when I was hesitant, I said, I don't want it to look like I'm taking anything away from them. They will be honored. From day one, they will be honored. They will be here. They'll be accessible every service, just as usual. And so uh, that is something that is a requirement from me to them. <laughs> when they are in town, if they're not traveling or anything, uh, they will be here in church and we will be loving on them just as we always do. Um, you know, it, it's, it's, it's not easy um, as people get older in your life, your parents and things. Um, you know, we live in a natural world. And so uh, it's just, it's, it, we knew again this time was coming, but it came quicker to me <laughs> than I anticipated. But every pastor should be looking at transition from the time they get at the pulpit. And so I am looking at 10 years. That is, I will be putting a transition plan in place within 10 years. You're like, you're just, you haven't even started and you're putting a transition. Yes, because you don't want it to catch you unaware and you do not want it to happen. And then you have to force things and you want to make sure you have the time to do it right. And that's why the first part of our vision is to mentor individuals because you mentor them into that position. Just as they mentored me, we'll be mentoring people into that position. You'll know my leadership style is not that I stand before you every Sunday and speak to you. You will be hearing from other members of the congregation. If you are a member of the congregation and you have a teaching gift in you, you will be used. <laughs> Just know that. You will be used and you will be used frequently. And so uh, there are, you know, this is a place that is safe. And this is a place where we get built up, but then we also have an opportunity to use the giftings that God has given to us. And so if you have a teaching gift, if you have drama gift, if you have whatever gift it is, you'll be using that in this congregation and the congregation will be blessed for it. Amen. More to come. Lots more to come. And I just uh, thank you for your support. Thank you so much for your support. Uh, it makes... Uh, much uh, makes things much easier, <laughs> does it not? It, it makes things much easier. And so um, I think, are you good? I think, yeah, I think, yes, absolutely. Oh, yes, oh, yes, please do. We know that God is already in our future, amen? So we don't have to be concerned about the future. This must have been spoken... Well, it was spoken on 4-7 of 2016. I didn't write it down when I said it, so I must have re-listened and then transcribed it. This was a prophetic word to her from the Lord on that day. It says, this place you are heading towards called future is a place I have already, already visited and prepared for your arrival. It is perfectly fashioned for you to fit and take your place in. Let not your heart be troubled with the how to or the when of your journey. I will see to it that all your steps will be solid and in the right time and place. I have also assigned for you a day to make that transition. Now we know it's January 10th. It is not too far in the future. Now this was in 2016. It is not too far in the future, but it will not catch you unprepared, says the Lord. For I am preparing the place and the person. Your prayer is to be, your will be done, Lord, in Jesus' name. Amen? Isn't that a fitting? I mean, 
that, that is a word that is now coming to pass. Praise God. Thank you. That's awesome. God is so good and so faithful. Amen. Now, my praise team, I look at you and I tell you, now you know why I've been telling you over the last few weeks. <laughs> you know, okay, well, there you go. Now you know. <laughs> Couldn't tell them why, but I'm just like, um, just so you know, I'll be moving out away from the praise and worship team. And they're looking at me like, what are you, crazy? Like, what, what? And that is still, I'm, I know that's part of my calling, uh, the praise and worship team. So I'll be working closely with the team. It's not like I'm going away. I'll be working close with the team. But that's why I've been talking to people and trying to get people positioned in place because when God promotes, he never leaves a hole. So those who have not stepped up yet, <laughs> now's your time. Amen? Now's your time. Do it. Don't hesitate because when God promotes, he never leaves a hole. And if there's a hole, it's because someone has not been obedient. Okay? And so uh, just know this is where we're headed. Hallelujah. So let's stand before we leave this morning. Thank you again. Thank you, Daddy. Uh, his stories, every time he tells the stories, I mean, we have tons of stories, and he's, he needs to write a book. And so encourage him. Every time you see him, tell Pastor, Pastor, write a book, and tell him, I'll help you write the book. Um, I'll give you a story to put in the book, because he needs to write a book. They have so much stories. He didn't share how they got kicked out of the church that he pastor. They didn't share that. They got the left foot of fellowship because they um, got with the Copelands, and they started speaking in tongues, and the church thought they were crazy. They actually had a burning ceremony of the books they were reading. <laughs> and so they were like, uh, you know, we were ostracized from the church, and we were young. We're like, now why aren't we going to that church anymore? You know, and, and of course, you tell little kids things, we get angry, like, how dare they? You know, and they're like, no, you have to stay in love. And love he modeled. Him and mom have, have lo modeled love. No, you have to stay in love. And so whenever we'd see those people, we'd be like, them. <laughs> you know? And they're like, no, change your attitude. You have to love them. So we got kicked out of that church. And that was how that church <laughs> ended. And so, you know, but we still love the people. And actually, we still see them. You know, every once in a while, they'll pop up. Uh, but uh, so many stories of through the years of things that molded and shaped them for ministry, and they worked in children's ministry, Mary Hart from the time, remember the Mary Hart, Christina, you'll remember the Mary Hart puppet <laughs> that we used to have, we used to do that in Sunday school, they worked in children's church, Father Abraham had many sons, you remember that, you know, joy, 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 down in my heart, he played that guitar like he was playing the drums, and so uh, the kids loved it, the kids embraced him and my mom, I mean, he had a children's ministry, and when we left, we, he felt bad about that out of everything else, his duties. Oh, the children. When we got to Tulsa, he's like, yep, we're going to sing at a church. I'm like, what do you mean going to sing at a church? We, we're going to Bible school. Oh, no, we're going to help this church out. They actually went to a church to help them in a funeral home. The church was meeting in a funeral home. I'm like, a funeral home? Because we're driving up. He's like, I'm like, where are we? They're like, oh, it's a church here. I'm like, no, this is a funeral home. There's a difference. A church, funeral home. This is not, oh, no, it's in there. I'm like, this is weird. Um, but we every week, he's like, oh, what are you doing? You know, even when I wasn't living right. They loved me through that. They loved me through that because my story is not perfect. My story, I have a past and it's not a perfect past. And thank God I decided to come and move here with them back here because if I did not, I'd probably be dead today or in jail one or the other um, or have uh, horrible diseases. Who knows what I would have had, but it would have not been pretty. And so I was not living right. But even in the midst of that, you know, you know, six months pregnant, come on, you're leading worship. I'm like, um, this is probably not good. You know, if, if the church knew, they'd probably not be happy. But that is how we love people. God doesn't hold that against anybody. He loves you through it. He wants you to come out of it. Don't stay in it. But he loves you through it. He loves you out of it. That's what they did. And that's the only reason we can stand here and be talking about this today. And the prayers of my mom, the prayers of my mom, she didn't just pray. She put action to her prayer where when I would go over there, she knew I wasn't living right. She knew what I was going back to once I left her. She'd load me up with groceries. You know, she wouldn't tell him because she wasn't supposed to do that time. She'd load me up with groceries, you know, go bring it to the car and, you know, gas money. Here's some money, you know, and just I'm praying for you. Not you need to get your act together. She did that at first. She did that at first. But then she learned that is not going to get us anywhere. I, I stopped coming to the house. I wouldn't come. But then 
and she was like, all right, I'm just going to pray. And, mm. and that's what she did and loved me. Every time she saw me, she just encouraged me. I love you. I love you. I love you. And that got me out of that situation. It was her love and her prayers and his love and his prayers that got me out of it. Parents, if you're here today, love your kids through whatever it is they're going through. Even as teenagers, they may have turned their back on God. Love them. Love them. I was listening to a message. I sent it to Christy. If you would like that message, let me know. If you have a child that maybe you're struggling with. And she said all her mom would do is hold her by her face and she'd sing that song. Even though her daughter was living out of her car, homeless, and, and just tried to attempt suicide twice, and she would hold her by her face and she would sing, Yes, I love you with the love of the Lord. Yes, I love you with the love of of the Lord. I hold my daughter's face in the spirit and I sing, I can see in you the glory of my King and I love you with the love of the Lord. When your kids are acting up, and ugly, and maybe calling you names, and saying things to you, or don't ever want to see you again, you know, hold them in the spirit, and sing that song to them, I can see in you, you may not see it, but I can see in you, the glory of my king, amen, amen, so I'm grateful to you, and I'm grateful to mom, because that is exactly what you did, and so I thank you. Father, we just thank you. We praise you. We give you glory. We thank you for opportunities that you put in front of us every day. And Father, I thank you for doors that open for us every day. Help us, Holy Spirit, to walk through those doors confidently because our confidence is in you. Our confidences are in our covenant right and privilege. And so we thank you and we praise you. Whatever it is that we're facing this week, you know what it is, whatever is standing in front of us, we thank you, Father, that we are able to overcome it in Jesus this week. We speak the word of blessing and favor to every person that is hearing us today. We thank you, Father, for your blessing your favor that surrounds us as we go today, your protection. In Jesus' name, we give honor and glory to you. Amen. Hallelujah. You're dismissed this